Hello, I'm Carolyn and in this video I'm going to show how you can create your own Pyramarch designs in Inkscape by using objects to pattern. Shown here on the left is a photo of a project I created earlier and on the right here are the pieces I created to print out. Let's get rid of all of these so we can start at the beginning. Obviously I need an image to start. I can use a photo or I can use a clip art image. For this project I'm going to use a photo. So I'm going to go File, Import, find the picture I want and import it. Now that's bigger than my A4 page so I need to resize it. As the padlock is currently locked I'm just going to enter 100. So that's now 100 millimeters. At this stage, if I look in the notification region, I can see I have an image. To create these type of designs, I need this to be a pattern. To change it, I'll just go Object, Pattern, Objects to Pattern. Now if I look in the notification region, I can see I've got a rectangle and the fill is a pattern. Let's just have a look in outline mode see I've actually got a rectangle, I don't have an image anymore. Before I continue, I just want to mention something that's quite important when creating these designs. If you look at the toolbar at Effect, this last icon here. At the moment it's shaded grey so I know it's selected. And that means the pattern will move when I move this shape. Now that might sound strange but let's just move it I can see that image is staying the same. Now I'll just come up here and deselect it and I'm going to move this image. And see how it's changing? And it's changing because it is a pattern and it behaves differently. So I'm just going to go back and for effect I'll come to this last icon, click on it so it's shaded grey and I know it's selected. For the projects in this video, I'm going to leave this last icon selected. I'm going to create a second video showing some projects you can create when this is deselected. So if you do try this and you get strange results, it could be the reason why. So what I need now is a set of nested shapes. To save time, I created some earlier. So I'll just select one of these sets, bring it over. Now I've got a set of five objects here. I need to combine them. So I will go Path, Combine. I'd also just like to mention, when I'm doing these, I like to work with a stroke line. It makes it easier to see what I'm doing when I place these nested shapes on my pattern. For the purpose of the video, I've deliberately made my stroke line thicker than I would normally use. Now to place this on the pattern, I know this is going to be underneath. I need it to be on top. So I'll just raise it to the top. I'll bring it over and I'll place it where I want to be on the pattern, which looks about right. To do the next step, I need both parts selected. As I've already got the nested shape selected, I'll hold down the shift key and just select the pattern as well. While they're both selected, I'll go path, Division. Looking at it closer, we can see lots of dashed lines. So I know those pieces are still there. They're actually underneath. So I'll just click onto a blank part of the canvas. I'm just going to select the original pattern, move it to the left. We can see the shapes are underneath. Now I've been experimenting with this quite a lot, and it doesn't matter which order I put the nested shapes in. I always seem to end up with the largest one on the top and there will always be two of them. So I'll zoom out a bit here so we can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to move it aside. We can see there's two the same. I only need one so I'm just going to delete the other one. Move that aside, delete the other one. And just continue through moving one aside and deleting the other one. I mean, if you need it for another project, by all means, keep it. And that's how easy that is. That's one design finished. All you have to do then is line it up 
on your chosen size printer paper and print out your project. Now I'm not going to go through the next steps of how you would create a print and cut project because so many of us are using different programs to do the actual cutting. You can see how easy these projects are to create. So let's just run through this once more. This time I'll use the nested set of ovals. Bring them over. I can see I've got a set of five individual objects. So I'll go path, combine. Once again, I know they're going to be underneath, which they are. So I'll raise them to the top, place them on the pattern. The nested shapes are selected. So I'll hold down the shift key and click on the pattern. So they're both selected. Then I'll go path, division. Then I'll click onto a blank part of the canvas, move the original pattern aside. Once more, the largest shape is on top. I'll move it to the right, delete the next one. I'll just continue separating the parts and deleting the duplicate. And here's the second set of shapes I can print out to create another project. When you're creating these projects, it's very important that your nested shapes aren't overlapping each other. I'll just show you the reason why now. I'm just going to draw two shapes, overlap them. As a separate, I need to select them both, go path, combine. Before I place them on the image, I'm just going to create a duplicate so we can compare what happens. Let's just bring them to the image, holding down the shift key, selecting the pattern, go path, division, click onto a blank part of the canvas, move the original pattern aside. Now let's look what happened here. Move this top one aside. You can see I've got one large piece that is the same shape as these two combined. And the second image is actually cut into pieces. If you look on the left one that I started with, where these pieces intersect, it's caused these to be cut. Of course, having your image cut apart is not necessarily bad and it can be used for different projects. But if you want to create these pyramid sheets, you really don't want your pieces sliced. And the other important thing is with your nested shapes, don't have them overlapping the original pattern. Let's just overlap them here. Select both parts and we'll go path division. Click onto a blank part of the canvas. Now let's move this image aside. Can you see it's actually sliced into it? So if you have your nested shapes hanging over the edge of your pattern, it will cut it out. And all these pieces are cut apart too. If you like Pyramage designs, you might like to give this a try yourself. And don't forget to watch my second video where I'm going to show how you can create a twisted Pyramage design. Give it a try and have fun. Thank you.